Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today I'm going to talk to you about making tube, tube rivets, not rivets. Um, and tube rivets are great for, you can set stones in them, um, you can also use them to hang pieces, and they're also a great decorative element. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, here's the same old ugly piece I worked on in my other riveting videos. I'm sure you're all fond of it by now. I'm going to put my tube rivet right here. Um, I've already punched my hole, not punched my hole, used my nail set to make a mark for my um, drill bit. The next thing you have to do is come up with a size of tubing that's appropriate for the piece. And I've chosen this. And what I need to do is to measure it to see to determine what size drill bit I need to use. Um, you can use calipers, and here it's approx these things are off, but it's approximately 2.40. Or you can measure it using a very difficult to get at ruler by spreading, putting it across the diameter of the piece. And it's basically the same, it looks like two millimeters. So I'm going to um, look on my handy chart that's on my website to tell me drill bit sizes. I know ahead of time that this is a 42, and um, that's what I'm going to use to be drilling my hole. So I'm going to drill this with the right foot pedal. There we go. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this that your drill bit is either a little too small or absolutely perfect fit for your tube. And I'm going to check that right now. Okay, that fits nice and snug, and that's what you want is to fit like that. So, if I can get it off, now I'm going to clean up the back because I you always have a little burr when you drill because um, the drill bit pushes the metal out the back. So I'm just going to clean it up. And then we're going to go cut the tubing. Okay, now what we need to do is see how much tubing we need. So you're going to put it through the hole and you want to leave approximately a millimeter on each side and you want to mark the other side like that. Now there's, um, I know of two ways that are comfortable to cut tubing. If you do not have these tools you could probably do it without them but you're not going to end up with a square of a cut. This is my favorite tool to use. Um, I've already preset it to the size and I fit it into my bench pin like this. Oops, forgot the saw. Let me hook that up. down there the blade goes in between and then we start tubing and try not to lose it on the floor ah, got it now if you use this this is another type to use cat fur is free of course you would put your piece in here with your mark visible in the middle and saw these run I think around 20 something dollars so they're way less than this higher uh, priced one here, but this is a really awesome tool. Um, okay, so now we have our little teeny tiny rivet. At this point, I'd like to show you um, another alternative to cutting tubing. They sell all different kinds of these little rivets, which in this case is pretty close to the same size and height. So, you know, it, it depends on, on how big a rivet you need, but these are great for just general little um, tube rivets and you don't have to cut anything either so that makes it a lot easier so anyway here we have it we're gonna put it through we're gonna try to put it through oh my goodness I'm sorry yes I can't handle anything okay I got it so now we're gonna start the riveting process so we need a steel block and um, some kind of tool to rivet with. This is a plumb bob that I bought at a hardware store. It's great for flaring uh, tubing. Um, Michaels and other craft stores sell these little kits or you know rivet uh, tools at in, in their shops too. Um, this one we'll be using second. This is these two are used first to flare the, the tube. So I like the plumb bob because it's meaty. And 
his name is Bob. So a couple taps and it started to flare. You couldn't get it to go through now because it's it's bigger than the opening. So I'm going to flip it around and do the back side. A couple taps. Okay, what do we want to work with next? I'm afraid that this is so... Uh, I guess I wouldn't go through, but I'm getting awful close. I don't want to put holes in my... Uh, uh, whatever this thing is called. Anvil! I don't want to divot it, so I'm nervous about using this longer pointed tool, but you're basically trying to spread the metal out as far as you can. And as you see, I keep turning it. You want to kind of be even. Try to hit evenly. It's very difficult. Then I switched to this tool. Um, it's the same concept, but it has this little edge around here, which helps to bend the um, edge of the tubing out. The other, the uh, cone shaped ones don't have that. And you can wiggle it like this when you hammer it. You'll see it's starting to spread out. Turn it over, do the back side. Now we should be dang close to done. There we go. It might have gone a little too far there. That side's kind of smushed. Always happens in demos. And it's not quite balanced, so I'm going to hammer the side down. It's not quite as flat. Finish it off. Check both sides. Putting, I, it may not show, but I'm actually hammering more on one side than the other. And then once again, this is a matter of practice. I would do 50, well, maybe not 50, but I would do 20 of them practice. Um, and you can see I kind of hit a little too hard. I got a little bumpy there. So this is not perfect. It's a demo. They're never perfect, I have found. So anyway, that's uh, a tube rivet. Now, if I wanted to set a stone in here, I could drop um, a smaller tube in here, clean it off the back, and solder it in. And leave it high enough to set a stone in. Um, you could also put a jump ring or a bale in here and wear this goofy looking thing around your neck. God knows why you'd want to though. So that's a tube rivet. So that's um, our tube riveting devil, devil, demo and uh, I promise you won't have to look at this ugly little piece again. Thanks for coming. Watch, Keep watching.